dot. So this is a summary of the physics before 1900. The physics is independent of the inertial reference frame. <coughs> all the inertial reference frame are equivalent. That means you can, all of them you can use uh, to, to determine the laws of physics. The Galilean transformations translate from one frame to another. And the velocities will go up to infinity. Because if this law is true, that means if I go three quarters of the velocity of light in a train, and in the train I send another ball at three quarters of the velocity of light, according to this, the velocity of flight of the ball with respect to ground would be one and a half times the velocity of flight. In principle, you can go all the way to infinity with this theory. And this is all the physics before Einstein. But then we got a problem. <coughs> the problem was like, electromagnetic waves, Maxwell wrote the whole theory of electromagnetic waves. In fact, Hertz sent and received radio waves in the, in the 1860s, the 90s, but then the radio waves were predicted to move with some velocity. Maxwell said, oh, I know how to measure. I know how the velocity of light should be related to some other things that were already measured. And he was able to put that into the equation to say, ah, the velocity of light should be 300,000 kilometers per second. But then the problem is that Maxwell equations are wave equations, right? These things that we said are not invariant to Galilean transformation. If you have light in here and you use Galilean and you use Galilean transformation, you don't see it as a wave in a reference frame. So that's a problem, all right? Because we were saying, according to the principle of relativity, you should be able to see all the things in the same way in all the different, the different reference frame. So we have three options in here. Maxwell equations are wrong, hardly, right? Because this guy predicted the whole thing of, based on things that were by the measure, and he named the velocity of light. The Galilean transformations are wrong. The same transformations that tells you if you throw a ball 50 miles an hour in a train that goes 50 miles an hour with respect to ground, you see the ball at 100. That's wrong. And then the relativity principle is wrong for, for light. And regarding the last one, this is essentially saying, well, if the relativity principle is wrong, that means there is one preferred reference frame for light. And that's when people brought the, the idea of the nature something from, for which light pro, uh, propagates to, something that supports the propagation of light. In the same way that water, for example, supports the propagation of a wave in top of it. So of course you can stop at any point and ask questions. So let me give you an example of how they actually determined that there was no ether. Imagine you have just a canal with some flow. If you are at this point, and you swim with the same velocity, back and forth, 20 meters, the time it takes you is slightly different than the time it takes you to swim transversally, 20 meters. And actually, the difference in time is related to the flow. You can imagine, if you have no flow, it's exactly the same to, to swim in this direction or in that direction. But if there is a flow, there's a time difference. And you can actually measure the flow velocity based on that time difference. And Michelson and Morley, they realized of this. And they, they, they concocted some sort of a, a nice experiment. And this is what they thought. They thought, well, imagine there is an air. Imagine there is something moving through the, through the universe that supports the propagation of light. And you have the sun in here, and you have the earth. And the earth is in here full, and it's spring in here. And then you can imagine that the light would move faster when it goes in this way than when it goes in that way, against the flow, right? And you also can imagine that the light would go different if it goes back and forth than if it goes in this direction. Same as the example I gave before. So this is what they did. They use essentially a laser in here, and this is a, a semi-silver mirror. And what they do at the very end is measure the time difference between the light going in this direction, back and forth, and coming here, or the light going in this direction, back and forth, and coming here. And if this time, if there's a time difference between the two, you would see, they, you would see that in the light detector because it's some sort of interference pattern. And if you see no pattern at all, that means the distance between the two are the same. If you see a pattern, it means that the time it takes for the light to go back and forth in one direction or in the other is different. And therefore, you're saying, ah, so that means there's some sort of a flow going in this, in this direction. 
And of course, you can rotate this instrument, right? If you see, if you see nothing here, you can rotate it like that and like that. But Michelson and Morley did not find any variation of the velocity of light in any direction or in any day of the year. It doesn't matter. In this theory, he was measuring there, he was measuring there, 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 in all the places. And also, during the same day, they would rotate the experiment, and they would always get the same result. The velocity of light was the same, regardless of everything. So this is one of the key experiments that show that if there is an error, we don't really see in a variation of the velocity of light. Also, but in that time, it was they could measure the Earth, uh, the movement of the planets very, very well. And if there was a f something in here permeating the, the universe, you would see uh, uh, you would see the energy of the Earth going around the, the sun going slower and slower every time. And you would see the Earth losing energy. You would see all planets losing energy. They didn't see that. So that was it for pretty much for the theory of the Earth. And that's the question if you care about. So what's the solution to this? The problem is simply that light is a wave. And waves are not typically uh, are not invariant to Galilean transformation. And the solution, of course, was very right. So these are the three options we have. That the Maxwell equations were wrong, that the Galilean transformations were wrong, and that the relativity principle is wrong. I said, look at these three, and he said, number one, the principle of relativity is valid. That means it's not wrong. That means it's symmetrically nice. Only an error could violate it, but the error is not being found. So he said, this is too symmetric. It has to be valid. And the other thing he said was the velocity of light in vacuum is the same in all reference frames. And that's essentially saying that the Maxwell equations are right. So the only option we got is that the Galilean transformations are wrong. These transformations I showed you at the very beginning, in which I derived this x equals x minus b t and t prime equals c. Those are wrong. This are Einstein's formula. And we can verify that. For example, so far we have not seen any law that is different in different reference frames. Nothing guarantees that tomorrow we will not find one that is. But as of now, we have not seen anything like that. And the constancy of the velocity of light in any frame is verified pretty much every day. For example, in double stars. Double stars are just two, two stars rotate, a system of two stars rotating around each other, like this. And you know, imagine the Earth is down here below, and we are looking at this thing. And this star over here emits light in all directions, but in particular, when it's there, it's emitting light also in the direction downstream. And when it's here, it's also emitting light in this direction. Now, the question is, is the light velocity, when this star is over here, the velocity of light minus the velocity of the star? And in the same way, is the, in that, and this is an analogy when, when which you grab a ball, and you throw the ball, and you're moving, we see from the ground the ball moving faster. So is this, is this? The velocity of light here and here, we can measure that. We can measure the velocity of this light, and it's not. It's the same. And this is one thing. Another way of, of doing this is with pion decays. Pions are particles that decay to two photons. They are, if you keep them arrested, you will see two photons going in opposite directions. But we can have these guys accelerate. We can accelerate these guys and have them at a very high velocity. 99% the velocity of light. So then the question is, at some point, one of these pions is going to have one photon going in the forward direction and one going in the backward direction. So the question is, again, is, is the velocity of this photon going at the velocity of the pion plus the velocity of light, and the velocity of this at the pion minus the velocity of light? And the answer is no. Again, we can measure the velocity, and we see that the velocity of light is the same. So this is, this is a, a huge verification of the possible. Thank you.